Welcome to another interview in our FM Expert series. Today I'm joined by Mike Packham. Hi Mike, how are you? Very well, thank you. Surviving Covid, very yeah. well. This is, the, this is the challenge of all of us. Good to see you though, Mike. Thank you for joining us. Mike is the MD of Bernard Williams Associates. And Mike, you're going to talk to us about, um, throughout your consultancy work going into all sorts of different organisations, you're going to talk to us about some of the common issues you see within FM. So I think this is going to be a very useful session. So I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Beth, and good morning to everybody. At least it's morning where I am. Some of you might be viewing this at another time zone. I appreciate that. Um, I, as Beth just said, I, I want to talk about some of the issues that I come across a, as an FM consultant going into all sorts of different organisations, both in the UK and, and overseas as well. Um, one of the things I do is I'm actually a course tutor for a 20-odd for a week uh, web-based course and one of the things I get my students to do during the during the first week is to think about what happens if FM gets it wrong and I, I'm going to use that as a kind of structure to uh, draw out some of the issues that I see uh, in uh, FM and FM consultancy generally. Um, so to start with when I ask the question what happens if we get it wrong in, CRE, in FM, um, students inevitably pick on breach of regulation yeah. okay great breach of regulation where does that take us to yeah. it takes us into the world of compliance which i i know is a is a theme which is very close to beth's heart i'm not going to attempt to lecture her on compliance <laughs> but it's not just compliance with legislation is it it's compliance with regulation it's compliance with code of practice it's also, dare I say it, it's compliance with financial management yeah, because sure. I think not only are we the owners of compliance for our organisations in the built environment, we're also owners of our budgets and a lot of us are very involved in making sure that we stick to the financial compliance rules and regulations uh, that are uh, applicable to us within our organization and depending on what sector of the market you're in there will be different rules and regulations around that and I also think uh, in the post-COVID world I think our finance directors are going to be looking very much at FM spend because to be honest let's face it it's one of the areas that is quite easy to cut you know you just Absolutely. slice the maintenance budget or or whatever else it is and I, I think so as I say compliance we need to make people aware of what happens if they do suddenly decide to, to cut the maintenance budget for example yeah. what's the potential impact on us going forward in our in our built environment and that kind of leads me into the second uh, point that I wanted to make I think which is around the built environment we are the custodians if that's the right word of the built environment and depending on what sort of uh, space we have available to us, if it's freehold space, if we don't do what we're supposed to do, then we're potentially in breach of our lease obligations. Um, if we're in a freehold situation, then maybe uh, we are affecting the long-term life of our buildings. We're, we're building in depreciation, obsolescence, and all those uh, sorts of considerations. So I think one of the issues for me as and FM, it's not just about today, it's about the longer term occupation of the space. So we need to be thinking about whole life. Yeah. We need to be thinking, and I know this is a topic that Derek Tate mentioned in his um, uh, YouTube session, asset management. Yeah. It's not about today, it's about our long term occupation. So that's my, that's my second yeah. point, I guess. Really important point, thank you for that. My, my third point is moving into the building. It's about, if I can turn my paper over, I'll be able to remember what it was. Um, it's about the working environment that we provide to our workforce. Are we providing the right sorts of services? Are we providing um, the, in a post COVID world, are we providing the cleaning? Are we providing the ways in and outs of the building and all of those sorts of uh, factors there. And I think, the key word here in terms of the working environment is around productivity. Yeah. Are we enabling our workforce to work productively? Mm -hmm. And that brings in all sorts of issues 
what we used to call new methods of working, trying to make the, the space that we have available to us more productive. Interesting dichotomy there, I think, post COVID, yeah. social distancing, we were trying to cram people into buildings, yeah. make better use of spaces. Post COVID, we're into social distancing. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, th I think there's, a, there's an interesting debate there, which we in, in FM can, can help to influence. And Mike, and course, you're, you're in a unique position as well, because you're pre-COVID, you were going into all sorts of workspaces and you can, you know, I, I, do, I have this when I'm auditing and you see so many different setups, layouts, you know, trends. It's going to be really fascinating now going back into those sorts of organisations and just seeing how differently each organisation is tackling it and what they're doing. It's going to, you're going to get a really interesting insight into it, aren't you? I, I think you, you're going to see all people. I, when I go and do a consultancy presentation, one of the common questions I get asked is, what is your solution? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Until I understand you as an organization, I do not know what the right solution for you is. I have no standard solution. I mean, some, some organizations, I don't mention any names, they go in and say, Mr. Client, this is our, this is our brand new solution. This is what you've got to do. Yeah. A year down the line, that solution won't be right. So I, I think I spend, I, I have been criticized for spending too much time actually getting to know the organizations I'm working for. Yeah. A lot of the organisations I work for, I've built up a relationship with over time. So we were, we were, we were mentioning an industrial client earlier on when we were speaking, and I've worked with that client since the 1990s, wow. early 1990s. Yeah. And over that time, you build up a relationship with the yeah. people, you understand the organisation, mm -hmm. and you can understand what will and won't work within that that environment whether it's industrial office or whatever else it is okay. so i think one of my my key, key messages i guess and i'm kind of going off track here again uh, but i tend to do that when i'm doing these things um is to understand your client yeah. fms don't understand their client very often and it's all about talking to your stakeholders it's about communication in in a lot of ways and um, one of my favorite sayings i don't know whether i invented it or whether i borrowed it from someone but business doesn't speak fm and fms don't speak business so until fm start to talk about evictors rois return on investments and all those sorts of things business is not going to listen to us mm. so i think we need to understand our clients that kind of leads me into thoughts around cost versus value yeah FM is very much seen as a cost. Yeah. And unless we can turn the equation around so that we are seen as delivering value to our organization, we are always going to be under pressure. Yeah. Now, how do we do that? It's all about understanding the client, making sure that we are uh, delivering what it is the organization needs to uh, be provided in, this, in an FM context to be able to function efficiently. Yeah. One, one of the other pieces of coursework I get my students to do on the RACS course is around a procurement exercise, yep. which I know that you've already covered in, a, in another YouTube, so I won't delve into that. But I asked them to outline for me the process they would go through if they were going to be outsourcing an mm -hmm. FM service. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them rush off and start doing the procurement exercise before they've understood what it is they are supposed to be procuring for their organization. Yeah. Is this, I think it's inbuilt into FMs. They want to get out there and they want to do things. Uh, yeah. But all too often, they don't understand what it is the business wants them to do before they get into it. Yeah. And, and Mike, half the challenge is sometimes the business doesn't understand what they want either. So yeah, no, absolutely. FM, I always talk about the word discovery. You know, you need to be asking the what, how, what, how, where who why sorts of questions to dig 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 down and understand you know what they actually need and help them understand that so you yeah, can no, absolutely i mean I, I well remember an exercise i did back in again i think back in the 90s sounds like i've been around an awful long time i, I probably have back in the the, the 1990s i was doing a, um, an fm review for a telecoms company and i went in to talk to the director of fm and i said to him look we're trying to develop your 
your FM strategy going forward. How many people do you think you're going to need to be housing in a year's time just to try and get a, a handle on the, the amount of space they needed? And, he, and he's, I always remember his response. It was this, during the phase when um, telecoms companies were going through massive expansion. Everybody was buying up everybody else. And his response to me was, Mike, I don't know how many people I'm going to have in six weeks time. Right. So it shows you how quickly, how dynamic the world of FM can be because we are constantly, one of my, again, one of my, one of my favorite uh, sayings, if you like, is organizations are dynamic. They're never standing still. Yeah. As a consequence for that, FM needs to be dynamic as well. Yeah. The, the days of uh, casting, I don't know, service levels in stone and expecting them to last forever and a day yeah. are long, long gone. Flexibility is the key word. And uh, more than ever with yeah. going on. Yeah, very much so, very much so. And I don't know how I'm doing for time. I'm probably talking over time. There was one other point I wanted to cover. Yeah. I think which was which was around the concept of image and brand. Okay. And it goes back to the organization again. And it, it's one of the things that I try and get my students to think about during week one and concentrate on delivering what it is. What is the impact on your workforce if FM are not providing a working environment that's clean, for example, or the light bulbs are out and so forth. So there's potential impact there on the organization in terms of lack of productivity, people leaving because they don't like the environment, all of these sorts of you know, recruitment costs going up because of that. So that's the in looking at the image, the brand of the organization internally, but externally, what's the impact of a dirty reception area on your customers that are coming into the building? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's very easy for FMs to get focused on what they're doing. And most of us, we're pretty good at what we do. You know, 90% of the time we're getting it right. It's the odd 10% that everybody remembers. They always remember the lift that was broken on the Monday morning when they've had a lousy weekend and it's peeing down with rain or whatever, don't they? Um, and, and again, it goes back to my, my point about communication, I think. A lot of the time, we're not telling our organizations how good we are at what we do. Now that sounds like uh, marketing promotion or whatever else it is. I, I think that's part of it. It's, yeah. it's part of performance ma management, perform performance measurement. So I, I, I think um, before I go off on a complete and utter tangent, I probably better call it. It's hard, Mike, because I, this is, you're, you're talking my language. I, I, I'm stopping myself talking because there's so many things I want to say and agree with. <laughs> but you're right. Well, what, give us a wrap up then. Give us a wrap up because you've given us some brilliant stuff. I, I think to me, all of that sounds like a lot. Yeah. And let's face it, it is a lot. But equally, that's what makes FM so fascinating as a career. It, every day is different particularly as an FM consultant going yeah. around the country, as you say, going into lots of different organizations. So I think I've got to call it quits there. because. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I think the point you've said about FM is dynamic and, and things always change and there's different perspectives. That's, that's what these videos are about is to try and hear different opinions and different experience. And you've brought a huge amount there. So thank you, Mike. I'm going to say for now, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Okay. Great to talk to you. Thanks, Mike.